welcome back for 22-year-old Neil McCann, who's been missing through injuries in his last match on 28 September. But he played an important role in a 3-1 win against, yes, Hibbs in the last Edinburgh derby at Easter Road. The Hibbs team is reshaping under caretaker boss Jockey Scott. Rab Shannon makes his debut after his £100,000 transfer from Dundee United yesterday. And John Hughes plays his second match alongside Gordon Hunter, who returns after missing eight of his club's last ten matches through injury. The other Hibbs debutant is that familiar player listed in the team lines as trialist. He's really 26-year-old Juha Ripa, who made his debut in midfield for Finland recently in a friendly match against Estonia. His club was Jazz Body, and his performance in the recent Hibs reserve match has forced him into the side today. Familiar figure in the middle, referee John Robotham from Kirkcaldy. A terrific atmosphere for the start of this Edinburgh derby. The heart supporters, in particular, an excellent voice, as befits a side which has lost only once in his last nine outings against Dundee United. The Hibs now, only one win in the last five below the mark. The red that was against Rangers and Easter Road. So the opening stages, as usual in the derby, very important indeed. The settling in process to be carried out. Uh, Reaper making a good early contribution. That's McCann involved straight away. Robbed by Darren Jackson, a good recovery by McCann. Here's Willie Miller. Looking for hard, but it's cut up well by Richie. Here's Ripa again. Welcome to Scottish football from Steve Fulton there. That tackle. By Rab Shannon. Andy Dow on the outside, playing way to the left for a four-man midfield. Here's Pat McKinley. Trying to test Gilles Rousset early in the match. Again, the Ristota midfield role. He's been playing at the back from time to time this season for Hibs. Let's see him here. From a very long way out, just couldn't keep that down. And McCann. McCann to play. Support from McCann. Very good running. That's for Robertson. The tackle put in there by Gordon Hunter goes unpunished. Robertson's on the ground. And if you roll both of them, something wrong with that. It did appear to be a crunching tackle by Hunter. Well, if that's not a foul, I don't know what is. So both sides operating in a 4 4 2 formation, changing to a 4 3 3. And it's John Hughes who's going to be booked this time. The challenge on Pi. Well, you can tell John Hughes, skippering hips today, is not at all happy about that. Perhaps complaining is his first foul. It certainly was, but it was a heavy one. But I wonder that if he's brought this upon himself with the game the way it's played, he's late, he's reckless. Bad tackle, Hughes. Fulton linking well with Cameron. Shooting chance. Well, got a lot of taking that left foot, Steve Fulton. Hasn't scored this season, but really it must only be a matter of time. He really is very powerful on the left-hand side. It's a good bit of play there between Fulton and Cameron. He did set himself for the shot. There's no offside here. Harper's pace takes him in behind the half defence. Terrific recovery tackle that by Richie. No, he wants to make a point to Lingsman, I don't know. Well, Harper really had a chance here. Spinning off the back line there and delaying the ball too long, allowing Paul Ritchie to make this excellent tackle on the recovery. Jim Jeff is animated there on the Hearts technical area. Look up. Wrestled there by Reaper. Well, the man from Finland will be spoken to. I just wonder what he makes of all this. It's been 15 minutes of relentless, frantic action. And he's now beginning to play his part in that kind of play. A bit of wrestling here, a clear foul on Mackay. 
tackle came from McGinley, he went in high, he's upset the referee, and he's upset Colin Cameron, there's trouble here for McGinley. He went in high with a stud showing. McGinley protesting, Hughes completing, he went for the ball. It's a free kick to Hearts and a yellow card for Matt McGinley. see why here, there was Cameron, now it's the jumping in with his touch, there's no argument about that being correct on the part of the referee. Harper, beaten well there by Naismith, this is Fulton. Excellent handling by Leighton, couldn't let that bounce away to Robertson, held it well. Well, Fulton saw the space open up ahead, came driving into that, lining up this left foot shot. Look at Robertson hovering. Okay. Robertson taking up good position ahead. It's a great ball in. Met well inside the area by Shannon. That's for Robertson from Fulton. Careful block there by Andy Dow. Hearts turn to pile on the pressure. The ball played inside Pat McGinley. No covering player coming across there. McCann's corner. Chance there for Cameron. Frustration in his face. Well, the ball coming through a crowded area could have been troublesome with the deflection. Leighton staying in his line there, ricocheted back there from McPherson to Cameron. There's Mackay. Robertson. Mackay again. This is Cameron. Robertson. Weir. Helped on there by Leighton. It was troublesome, all right. Jim Leighton had to be at full stretch for this. Cameron working his way inside. It's good movement again from Robertson up front. Ball flighted in on the angle. Came off the crossbar. Jackson to Harper. The Reaper battling hard beside Harper. This is McAllister against Naismith. Still, the young man at fullback denies the opportunity of the cross to McAllister. Chase here for Robertson, matched by Shannon. Robertson against Leighton. Terrific recovery. Smile on the face of Jim Leighton. Well, the headed pass back put him in trouble here. Shannon lofting that towards Willie Miller. That was ambitious. Robertson did well initially, but look at that recovery from Leighton. Cameron with Rhea. Mackay, space on the far side for Naismith to come forward. Jackson recognises that, comes racing back. It's a good play by Naismith. What a fine composed effort by the youngster. Well, a very high hopes for the great time cast, and you can see why. Hustled all the way there by Jackson, kept his head, checked inside his right foot, and that was close. Harper on the left-hand side. Good exchange of feet there. McAllister now on the right, promising play from hits. Plenty of players forward here with an attack from McAllister to attack. That's Jackson! Fine play from hits. That and Jackson's very close here, a very good bit of running by McAllister. He pulled this back intelligently. Jackson stayed back intelligently. That first time volley with the left, just past the top corner. With a cross by Miller, turned away for the corner by Cameron. Could take no chances with Dow closing in behind him. So inside the closing five minutes of the first half, which has been fiercely contested. 
Bruce on the line. Goes Hughes. Off the line by Naismith. Hughes finds some space in there. It's all in his hearts. Now again. Going to cross that piece out. That pass goes astray though. And goes the repass. Strongly. McAllister on the left. Shannon. Good play from Hibbs. Tyler and McAllister together. That last for the ball to be played there. Bruno will want that to go for the goal kick. Experience defending by Pasquale Bruno. Chance here for Hibbs, no doubt about this. Rusi is in the line. Hughes found space beyond David Weir. Naismith did well on the line. Last attempt on a fiercely competitive first half. Real derby action right from the first kick of the ball. With neither goalkeeper seriously tested in the match, there's been some very stout defending. Jim Leighton had one moment of real anxiety when John Robertson tried to lock the ball past him, but he survived very well indeed. And half time, I reckon the school is just about right. And Hearts nil, Hibs nil. Once again, the Hearts fans whipped into something of a frenzy for the start of the second half. Looking for a big send off before the Coca Cola Cup final, a week tomorrow against Rangers. Certainly, no lack of commitment on the part of both sides so far in the match. But the defending is of a very high quality so far, and very few openings have been created. So that Jim Leighton and Gilles Rousset have had a really comfortable time so far. That may change now, though, in the second half. McCann back to Fulton. Reaper got a touch. Well, can't prevent the corner. Very tough practice in this for the Yuha Reaper. Finish player. I must find the pace somewhat hectic here. Good clearing header there by Shannon. Naismith to Cameron. Now Abraham's player back facing the ball and Bruno goes for the long range yet, but it breaks. Oh, Shannon, it gives Jackson a chance to go in and goal. He's quick enough to test Fusse. A chance for the hips. Well, he wants a corner kick, Jackson, but he's not going to get one. Well, what a great chance this was. Jackson being hounded here by Naismith and by Bruno, but quick enough to get away. Slanting that beyond Rousset, wide of the post. Well, Darren Jackson may look back on this with lots of regret, I think, because what a difference this could have made to the whole match. Did Rousset get a touch? The referee said no. Here's Jackson again against Bruno. Jackson's cross, Naismith at full stretch. A corner kick to Hibbs. Confident play again by Darren Jackson, really is growing in stature, really. The second half of his career, he's now turned 30, but becoming a better player all the time. But he may regret that miss. Now to Harper. Now caught late there by Mackay. Bruce under severe pressure, Jackson in particular. Hughes also. And Pai wants a debate with Hughes now. Well, now, no one hands raised there, I can tell you. Rousse is raced out of his area, pointing at John Hughes. Now, this really was much ado about nothing, I can tell you. I saw it all happen. And Pai was the player who caused the problem by going towards Hughes, really trying to brush him aside. Then Pai went down like a sack of potatoes. And that's what's caused all the trouble. John Hughes standing there, calmly with John Robertson. He's been booked already. He did lift a hand, that was to push Pai aside. But why Pai went near him, I really don't know. And the linesman on the far side, John Fleming, has spotted what happened. He'll tell John Robottom, and there could be trouble, I suspect, for both players. 
here's the description now of course if John Hughes is guilty of anything at all he's ordered off because he was booked in the first half Stefan Pye certainly would have crossed him I think to complain about his challenge on Rousse and there is trouble and it's going to be John Hughes who's going to be ordered off the red card is in his hand the Hibs players are complaining bitterly well, John Hughes, who's on the ball, playing for Celtic against Hamburg. And Pai really cannot be pleased with his contribution. But John Hughes is going off. The red card it is for Hughes. He did lift the hand, there's no doubt about that. He lifted his hand. I thought simply to push Pai away. Pai had approached him in a manner which should never have happened. So there is some sympathy for Hughes, but he's an experienced player, he should have known better, and Pai certainly takes no credit out of this. So Pat McGinley's gone to centre-back alongside Gordon Hunter. Pai got a touch, there's Robertson. Now that would have been an insult to injury for Hibs, but Robertson drilled that home. He's so capable of that, so frequently. Good ball in this from here, and Pai does extremely well to get the touch on for Robertson. And that's a very bad finish by Robertson's standards. Jim Leighton's concerned, something's coming from behind, I think. Was he looking at perhaps things being thrown towards him? I don't know. There's a problem here on the touchline. John Robottom is now speaking to the police and Leighton's moved away from the goal area now I think there have been missiles thrown towards him that's the problem so Leighton's getting himself well away from the scene of danger well this is very sad indeed for the game the police are there it does appear as though some missiles came on Naismith sidestepping McAllister very neatly indeed. He's done himself nothing but credit in the match so far, the youngster. Here's Robertson. Headed away by McGinley. In goes Hunter. Jackson neatly retaining possession. Trying to pick out Harper. Well, he's aged, I think, <laughs> this afternoon, Jockey Scott. Cameron to Robertson, reaches Mackay. Well, the pace of the game has never relented so far. That's for Robertson. Terrific challenge there by Willie Miller. Excellent full-back play, covering his central defence. Good ball it was too by David Weir. Robertson made a very intelligent run. They're away from the central defenders, but reckon without Willie Miller. Harper did well, Jackson. Oh, it's good running by Jackson. Has to do it for himself, I think. Good play by Jackson. No real power in the shot in the end, but how well he did here taking this pass from Kevin Harper, which is lucky to reach him, actually. It went past the player. Might well have been held up there, but look at this weaving run by Darren Jackson. Sawyer had to do it all by himself, came inside Bruno. It's Mackay now, the pine. Oh, space in the far side, but Cameron missed a great chance for Hart. Cameron against Leighton. Well, it's a bad miss in one sense from Colin Cameron, but it's terrific goalkeeping again. What a wonderful pass it was from Stefan Pai. Now, just look at the way Leighton stands up here on the angle, poses the question for Cameron, who went for the chip shot. Well, it really was great play. Look at the ball there from Pai. And Leighton was exposed. But look at the way he stands up. And Cameron couldn't keep it down. It's beyond Miller for Cameron. Tackle came from Ripa. He's certainly been a bit of a mix in the middle of the field, Ripa. Certainly not out muscled in any area of the field. Perhaps expecting a few more chances to bring the ball down and pass it, though. 
He smith across to Mackay. That's Robertson. Pye. Leighton again at full stretch. Marvellous save by Leighton. Well, he had to hang in the air almost as Pye did not hit this so powerfully. He went for accuracy, shipped it in there, and it's a brilliant save. Harper. Stepping away from Bruno. Richie comes across, looking there for Jackson. Now Harper. Good effort. Harper and Jackson making something out of really nothing there. This is fine attacking play by the two Hibs front men. Jackson finding space there. And Harper trying to beat Rousset on the near post. Here's Weir. We suspect that there will be a shoring up defensively by Hibbs in these closing frantic minutes. Mackay. With the space it goes for Robertson. The good ball in hand by Shannon. Intelligent play by Robertson. The run was the roughing in the angle there. Played it beyond Jim Leighton, right onto the six shot line. Shannon was first to the ball. Cameron forward. Played back by Thomas. The first to the ball and almost Jackson. Great play by Richie. And it had to be at that. And Paul Richie reacted quickly enough to deny Darren Jackson an unlikely chance. Here's Thomas. Robertson. Back to Mackay. He's seen a lot of the ball to direct traffic from midfield to half in the second half. Here he goes again. No, the final whistle it is. Hips have survived the whole second half, actually, with only ten men. And Jim Lett is going to hero against Stefan Pye in the heart of the controversy. Getting a handshake there from Jim Lett, who wasn't too pleased with him. Checks on the damage for you, Harry Park. Well, it's been a tough, competitive match all the way through. John Robottom has kept the lead in the game. And that was no easy task. But in the end, Hibs without the 10 men with John Hughes on the top in controversial circumstances. But Hibs held out with a display of real resilience and determination. And then the inspired goalkeeping would require from Jim Lake. And it ended. Hard still. Hibs now. A frantic game, uh, as derbies always are. I thought in the first half, uh, I thought we, we played well when we were in possession of the ball. I thought overall we, we worked really hard, and in particular in the second half when, when we were unfortunately down to 10 men. Uh, we battled very well, uh, and I thought we deserved a point out of it. A word about John Hughes, we had him captain today. He finished the game after 50 minutes. How is he in that dressing room? Uh, very downhearted. Uh, he's let himself down and he's let the, t the players down. Um, but in saying that, I, I thought it was a, a harsh decision. I thought both the, the, the sending off and his first booking was uh, very harsh. But in saying that, uh, referees make decisions and they've got to stand by that. Uh, but he's, he's very much down. But he'll come back. I mean, he's an experienced player. He'll come back. And uh, I thought in the first half, he was immense. I thought he did really well and held us together at the back and, and showed the urgency that was required. And that is the, the reason that John Hughes is now team captain. Well, I think it was a typical derby, you know, and for me, the second half really took a wee while to get going with John Hughes being sent off and, and the Hibs were obviously upset at that. And, and uh, you know, one or two players maybe lost their place a wee bit and but it made for a lot of stoppages to, in, in the second half early and it, and it threatened to maybe get out of hand. So we were trying to get the players to calm down and but make sure that they got the thing down and passed it. But what it did is it turned the game into where Hibs just sat deeply and, and battled away brilliantly to, to try and defend and maybe hit us on the break. And, uh, you know, any chance we got in there, the ball just seemed to no break for us or Hibs got a, a foot in and, and made a blocking tackle. But the chances we did get, Mickey Cameron was very unlucky when he, when he did everything right and it just grazed the bar. And then Jim, Slate, Jim Lights had a wonderful save for Stephen Pye. But... Um, you know, I'm no fault in their effort, but I think it all became a bit of a frantic, look, uh, usual derby. But, uh, you know, we, we worked hard, but we just didn't do enough to break them down. A word finally about the uh, youngster at left back, Gary Neesman. He'll be a tremendous prospect. I thought he took a wee bit of time to settle down today. And, uh, you know, he's against the experienced player in Kevin McAllister, so it was a good wee test for him. But he got better as the game went on, and he's got to be a tremendous prospect. And we'll just watch and not rush him too quick. But uh, great future at Hearts and a great talent. 
A typical derby, as both managers said. The draw takes Hearts unbeaten home record to ten games and keeps them fourth behind Aberdeen, only in goal difference. Hibs are sixth, a point ahead of Motherwell, but now one behind Dunfermline. Well, uh, let's get a reaction from, uh, from uh, John and from Billy. John, from the Hearts' point of view, a point against ten men. Is that uh, satisfactory? No, I think we were looking for the, the three points today. Um, it was a little bit disappointing after the Hibs going down to ten men, uh, only to get the draw. But they defended really well and uh, made a lot of good saving tackles late on. But I think subconsciously, maybe we were thinking a wee bit about next week and, and just taking a little bit of foot off it. But um, next week's another game and we'll be looking forward to that uh, from tomorrow onwards. The, the big controversial incident, of course, was the sending off of, of John Hughes. Now, the, the ball was 50 yards away at the time, so perhaps not surprisingly our camera didn't capture the incident. But Jock Brown seemed utterly convinced that he was harshly dealt with. How did you see it? Yeah, well, it was difficult. It always started with, with an incident with Rousey and uh, then Stefan sort of made a, a movement towards uh, John Hughes. And this, something happened and I think John Hughes raised his hand. And when he does that, the linesman's looking through a, a pile of bodies and um, then the referee was called over and I think there's only one course of action. Uh, so perhaps he's a little bit unlucky. But when you raise your hand, you know, the, the referee and linesman are, are duty bound now to, to take action. That's right. And it did come down to the linesman's decision, Billy, didn't it? It did. And it must have been difficult for him to see from that angle. But uh, I think uh, Pai made a lot of it. But um, it's been John rightly pointed out, you raise your hand, you're always going to put yourself in difficulty. But the interesting thing for me was the referee and obviously the linesman was there for no doubt what happened. And it was a red card that was shown. So mm. he saw enough. And I didn't think it, uh, it merited that. And I think John can consider himself a bit unlucky. A little bit, yeah. On the brighter side, the performance of Gary Naismith was, was, was quite outstanding, John, wasn't it? And he's, he's, what, 18 today? Yeah, he's 18 today. So it was a, a good birthday for him. He, he played in a derby game, which is a big thing for any player. But uh, at 18, he came in and, and he's played magnificently. He's done well against Celtic this year in his debut in the, the Coca-Cola Cup. And um, I think he showed that he's going to mature. Um, and be a fine hearts player for years. Holds down Jackson off well uh, and comes in on his bad foot and has a fantastic effort there. And um, He's full of promise and full of life and he's a lovely lad. Billy, you were impressed as well this afternoon, weren't you? Yes, um, I, I was very impressed with him in that Celtic match you mentioned, but he looked very self-assured and very confident. This is quite an interesting piece of defending because he keeps his eye on the ball. He's not allowed himself to dive in. A bit fortunate just when it comes here, gets a wee nutmeg, but he's got uh, good composure and he knows what he wants to do. It never allows Kevin Castle to upset him at all. And yet, one assumes, John, that Neil Poynton will come back in for the Coca Cola Cup final, but uh, it's nice to know that you've got a young player like that uh, in the wings, so to speak. Yeah, well, that's him played three games now, and I don't think he's let anybody down. But Neil will obviously think he'll be coming back in, I would imagine he would. The man's just saying there's plenty of time for Gary and they won't rush him, and I, I think that's what they'll do. Uh, but I think there's plenty more cup finals to come for him. Absolutely. On the Hibs side, we raved about Jim Layton quite rightly last Sunday, Billy, didn't we? And uh, we have to do so again. He's just a goalkeeper in terrific form at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he never stops, does he? You know, this is not a shot that will ever beat him, but he takes it so confidently. And uh, another thing about him is he's been a good professional, good discipline about him, but uh, a nice command of the area and everything. Not so convinced that he handled that as well as he would have wanted to, but nevertheless, he got away with it. But... Uh, you know, his performances just seem to get better. Does really well there. Yeah, I think if, if you can say Gary's got a young head and old shoulders, uh, an old head and young shoulders, Jim's got an old head and old shoulders, <laughs> and he uses it quite well. <laughs> he stands up very well, doesn't he? I mean, he really makes himself big when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and yeah. that's, that's a great attribute, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he did very well against Colin Cameron when Colin was one-on-one was -on -one with him, and um, he stood up and, and made Colin do all the work. And unfortunately for us, Colin just um, chipped it over. Yes. But um, he is a good goalkeeper and he's matured with age, uh, which makes him a really good goalkeeper now, I think. Absolutely. It's disappointing always to get a no-scoring draw, a game without a goal at all. A uh, couple of good chances which did come up, though. Let's take a look at those. Darren Jackson's first look. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think uh, Bruno's was a great chance there, a shot from 80 <laughs> yards. But um, Darren goes through here and I thought Darren played really well today. He's, he's had a lot of critics. And he has an effort there. I was right behind that, and contrary to what Billy thinks, um, Hughes Rousey did get a foot to that <laughs> and push it past the post. Even the replay, sometimes the camera does lie. And I was right behind this, and managed to put him in the stand just to see this. So and, he didn't um, even get the corner He out. didn't even get the corner out, but <laughs> it's hard to tell with Dan because he always has a moan anyway. This is the one that John mentioned, Billy, of course, the Colin Cameron It was chance. a great chance, wasn't it? Uh, beautiful ball in there. And, you know, Colin Cameron handles it so well, controls it, looks up. Certainly Jim Leighton makes himself as big as he possibly can, makes it awkward for him, but 
I think he'll be very disappointed, but everything else, he does everything else right, just a wee bit too powerful with his chip. But mm. uh, what, that, those were the two real chances in the game, in actual fact. It was. Over the piece, um, from Hart's point, point of view, I mean, it's continued a good home run, John. Things are going well for the club. Optimism high for the cup final, I take it. Yeah, any team that gets through the cup final has got to have a, a bit of optimism for the future. And um, it's a big week for us, a big week for the young players and the old players and the, the players hoping to get, get involved uh, next week. Mm. Um, but it's, it's a big week and everybody will be looking forward to it uh, from, from tomorrow onwards. Right. Will uh, that cup final defeat and maybe talked about a lot, will Jim Jeffries use that to motivate the squad or um, will it be ignored? I think it'll probably be ignored because you don't want to, to bring up embarrassments too often and put mm. them back in people's minds. Um, mm. But it's a chance to get back and get back on a, a cup winning tradition that Hearts have lost for a, mm. one or two years, I think. Um, and it would be